Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel, Rewind That. It's your girl, Miss K. If this is your first time coming across my channel, welcome. Please be sure to subscribe if you like the vibe and hit that notification bell so you know when I upload more videos like this one. All right, guys, it's been a long time coming and I am finally going over the oval. Yes, I haven't been watching, but I started watching and as promised, okay, much to my dismay, okay, let me just let y'all know that. Much to my dismay, I'm keeping my promise and I'm recapping the oval. All right. I'm going to try my best not to say anything bad and I'm just going to recap. All right. So here we go. The oval season four, episode one. And this episode is called the package. All right. This is for the playlist. Now the episode starts off with agent grip at the door of Alan's apartment and him and Priscilla have their guns pointed at one another. Priscilla wants him to lower his weapon, and when Grip finally does, he grabs a hold of Alan and threatens to break his neck if Priscilla doesn't cooperate. He repeatedly tells Priscilla that he just wants to talk to her about everything that's going on and that he'd rather do it over coffee. Priscilla was not budging with the cooperation, so Grip throws himself over the banister and he takes Alan along with him. But both of them are okay, guys, okay? At least Alan walks away from the situation, leaving Grip laid out on the floor. Next, we have Hunter at the Halsons' house, and he wants to speak with Sharon. But Sharon was totally disgusted and just wanted him to leave, and she wasn't afraid to express this to him. Of course, Hunter, who feels very entitled to do whatever the heck he wants, couldn't believe Sharon was talking to him like this. But anyway... Nancy asks Hunter what the heck he was doing there if his son just died. So Hunter tries to play it off and say he was just joking that he was there to see Sharon because he's really there to see Richard. But when Nancy tells him that Richard isn't there and she'll have to call him, Hunter says, oh no, your phone won't work as long as I'm on the premises. So now we get back to him focusing on Sharon and Hunter wants to know if Sharon told Nancy what he offered her. And Nancy says no. So Hunter says to Sharon, why wouldn't you talk to a woman of wisdom and experience about the offer? Because I'm sure she would have told you to take it. So Nancy says, you would be wrong about that. And Hunter rudely says, well, in that case, 20 years from now, you're going to be living like this, looking like that. So Nancy was like, I beg your pardon. I think it's time for you to leave. So he goes outside and of course Nosy Jody is out there and she wants to take a picture but she ain't no fan because she ain't vote for him. She just wants proof that he was there. But Hunter tells her the same thing he told Nancy, phone won't work till he's off the premises. And to be honest guys, this scene seemed so pointless. I mean, you know, this guy's son just died and he ain't doing nothing but chasing tail and being his old arrogant self. Next, the shootout between Kyle and Bobby end with Kyle running out of bullets and Bobby apprehending him. Next, Lily and Don, who are both shot, thanks to each other, are still going back and forth, okay? So security comes in to help both of them. And guys, Don and Lily going back and forth was definitely cringe-worthy as my girl Savannah forewarns me, all right? Are you in pain, baby? Oh, let her die. And she was like, that's what you want. You dang right, baby. It was just ridiculous, guys. I'm sorry. I may sound stupid, but it sounded stupid. Next, Hunter demands that Alonzo takes him to the hood to get drugs and a voluptuous black woman. But Alonzo wants to take the president back to the White House because they're out here riding in a regular car, which is Alonzo's car. But of course, Hunter is not trying to hear it and tells Alonzo to do what he's told. Next, Victoria is visited by a doctor who lets her know that they performed an autopsy on Jason. And guys, Victoria was not happy to hear this, but the doctor tells her that Jason died of cancer and was going to die soon anyway. And of course, Victoria was very surprised about this. So after much pretending to be a mother hurt about losing her son, she tells the doctor to have creepy Jason's body cremated. And I was just like, wow, she definitely needs to make my next list of worst moms on TV. OK, next, Richard visits Sam at the hospital and Sam tells Richard that he's going to need emergency surgery. But first, he wants Richard to go to an address in his phone and make sure the package is there. Sam tells Richard that the package has to be protected at all costs. Sam also tells Richard to tell Priscilla what happened to him. 
Next, Max calls Bobby to make sure he has Kyle in custody. Then he tells him not to touch him because he's on his way. And I'm actually really tired of Max trying to kill Kyle, guys. Like, I have no love for Kyle, but Max just really annoys me. And I kind of wish he would have died with Aging Yuma. <laughs> anyway, next, we see that Don has ordered Lily to be strapped to a gurney. And she's just screaming in pain while Don keeps telling her to shut up. But how can she shut up? Because they didn't give her nothing for the pain like they gave him. Then he gets a call from Grip who lets him know that Priscilla and Alan got away. So Don tells Grip to stab himself in the head. Next, Priscilla and Alan make it to Nancy's house and Priscilla asks Nancy if she heard from Richard. So Nancy calls Richard and he picks up and she tells him that he needs to get home because a lot is going on. So Richard says, I'll be home after I make this stop. So then Nancy puts Priscilla on the phone and that's when Richard tells her that Sam has been shot. Of course, Priscilla starts to panic and she wants to get to the hospital, but Richard says, no, it's safer if you stay at my house. Then we get to the last scene where Richard goes to the address that Sam sent him to. And when Richard gets inside, guys, he sees two men pretty much guarding creepy Jason's body. And I was too through, okay? But not surprised because y'all already said he was alive when I did my season three live, okay? Of course, I'm not happy about it, and I honestly don't have time to play these kind of games. But anyway, guys, that's how the episode ended, and I wasn't too thrilled about the episode as a whole. And at this point, I'm just hoping that they come harder in the coming episodes, and that's that, okay, guys? That's the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And hit that notification bell so you know when I upload more videos like this one. Until next time, you guys take care and be blessed. Bye-bye.